Hey everybody, my name is Isaac Terex, and today in this TLDW to Longton watch, I'm going to be going over this effect. Um, there's an hour and 14-ish minute long video that covers the whole process and all the settings and all the concepts behind it. Um, but in this video, I'm just going to be going over the HIP file that is provided with that, and it will be in the description to this video, just so that um, I can explain each process, just not as in depth, but if you want all of that information, you can go over to that video. It will be hosted on the Motion Design Community um, YouTube channel, which will also have a link in the description, but let's just get, um, in, get into it. So I have a sphere here, and this sphere is going to be emitting when we take, uh, used as the emitter when we take it into the pyro simulation down here. So these are kind of just broken up into the sections. So this part, um, which we're covering now, is just you know prepping it. This is prepping it for the pyro simulation. This is taking and meshing that pyro simulation, and this is prepping it for the rigid body simulation. And that's everything. So we take the sphere, and then we just give it an animation in displacement. Then after that, we add um, a wiggle in the rotation using motion effects. And then after that, you just bring it up and you scale it up. So all those working in tandem gives you this. And this is just to add variation to um, how we emit from it because we're going to subdivide it, add normals, and then we're going to take those normals and we're going to map them from the normals to the velocity uh, so that it's using that instead. Uh, we take um, the pyro source, and when the mode is now surface scatter, because this is growing, um, you want the separation to you know, adjust as the object grows instead of its default, which is keep input. I'm going to go and explain that more in the other video. And you just add the density and the velocity so that it can go into the simulation. And after that, you just you know take the volume, rasterize attributes, bring in the density and velocity, and it's into a null and it's good to go into the dop net. So once we go click that on, let it cook for a little bit, and here's our simulation. So the basis of this is just a smoke object with a you know a little bit bigger uh, bounding box, and that square is actually just because it's hitting the bounding box. That's where that shape comes from. Um, inside of here in the volume source, add back in the velocity and animate it up and down as it grows, add in the density, animate that up and down as it grows, and take the density density and ma map it to the temperature. Then we go over to the pyro solver in the simulation, just animating from nothing up to a little bit um, so that it kind of falls down as it grows up. And in the shape, um, other than that, I've added shredding and sharpening and turbulence. The shredding is down a little bit from its default and the turbulence is up a little bit from its default. And in the turbulence, I've made it a lot smaller swirl size, and I've brought up a lot more turbulence. And that's everything. It's also covered in these notes here. Uh, if you upload it, or if you open it, and you're just kind of confused, all of it is notated. And then after that, there's just a dop import output, and all that's doing is bringing it into being made by points. So you let that go. So the points from volume is just, you know, scattering points and filling it so that we can use it in the VDB. There's quite a bit of VDB that goes into the meshing. Um, you could probably simplify it just by, you know, doing this, doing that, and then mesh it right away. I just, you know, wanted a little bit more smooth of a shape. So I go and then I make those into particles. I just use a resample to resample it after that point because that's tied to the particles. So it kind of has to be closer to that. And then afterwards you can resample it. Then I dilate it up just a little bit before it goes into the smoother so I don't lose too much um, information. And then right after that, it's just a normal polygon um, convert VDB. And that is all of that from the meshing. So that's the object that you're getting out. This is a little bit lower quality, so it loads faster in here. Um, it's about five times as high numbers as I was doing it. I was doing it at about 0.01. And then now it's prepping to go into the rigid body. Um, solver. So right away I move it up so that it's not intersecting with the ground plane when I add that in. Uh, I rotate it a little bit so that it's not perfectly flat when it goes in and drops down, that it has a little bit of wiggle and has to even itself out, and then I just scale it back up. So if we go back, it's just scaling back up while it's also scaling in the pyro simulation. After that there's a large, mid, and small um, 
mountain displacements. Uh, they're all just increasingly getting smaller, adding back on top of each other to add this a little bit more detail that I didn't um, think I would be able to get in the pyro simulation. So I just added it back on top of the mesh afterwards, recompute the normals, put it into it out, and then it's ready to go back into the dot network. So inside of here, there's a rigid body solver, rigid body object, and just your typical ground plane and gravity. So not much going on. And the big thing here is the used deform geometry and the used um, object transform. This is going to pick up the scaling that we just did before it came in here. And this is going to pick up the fact that it's a growing mesh. And it's going to kind of recompute it every time so that it can, you know, t in take into account the fact that it's getting bigger. And it's not just that, like a sphere that I've dropped and is rolling around. Um, and then the other big thing that's covered in here is bullet versus RVD when you're doing a rigid body. Um, the first time I did this and the one that's all rendered out and everything was just using bullet, but the second time I did it with the sphere object um, in another video that I've posted, that I used the RVD. I found it worked a lot better for this sort of thing with all the intricate little parts that's growing out. Um, and that's a lot due to the fact of the collision. So bullet data, if we go in here and we run it a little bit, and we turn that off and show this. It's just using convex hull and it's making this really low poly version that is not exactly represent, a great representation of the mesh itself, but it's doing a fast, good job and it runs really fast. Um, but if we use volume, that's a little bit closer because um, it's actually thinking about all these caves inside and everything. And it's kind of just skinning it um, when it runs through the rigid body dynamic solver. So. Uh, just a thing to keep in mind, and I go a lot more into it in the full video. And once all of that's done, once it's all good, we're just going to turn this and display the geometry back on. Go up a level, and go here to the out. And I just have this ABC out so that when I um, export as a Lambic, just remember to add that dot .abc export frame range. Um, that it's just cleaner that way. And once I export, I go into Cinema here. And I explain a little bit more, you know, behind the process of how I made this render. Um, I go really into the texturing here. Um, it's just an Alambic file that's subdivided afterwards a little bit. Um, and it's all lit by an HGRI by Maxim Ross. Um, big huge shout out to him. Love his HGRIs. And the texture here is really simple. It's just a marble that's scaling up along um, scaling up here in triplanar along with the mesh so it um, kind of looks like it's um, not slipping on top of it even though the mesh is independent of the texturing on top of it it's not UV unmapped so I just use triplanar for that and then the rest of it's all just happening from the scattering medium so you see down here in thinner parts it's this lighter color and up here it's purplish and then in some areas it's red that's all just due to the fact that it has scattering and the scattering is you know kind of low but has a lot of color inside of it this blue color and that's mixing with this really light um, only three percent saturation um, orange color and the density is actually quite high in here if you look at that it's 600 so that's that's pretty high and that just got this result you can mess around with these and you know get a completely different look um, but those are the ones that I set up for this and I just used path tracing with you know a little bit higher um, specular depth because of the SSS to get it cleaner um, and not too bad samples and I didn't use any AI denoising um, or anything and that's the whole thing so if you really want to go into all the in-depth stuff I would definitely check out the hour and you know 14-ish minutes long video that um, is posted on the motion community motion design communities um, YouTube channel I'll add a link to that in the description um, you can get this file again in the description. It's a HIP file, so you can really dig into it and export it and change around and do anything you want with it. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.